And welcome back, everybody. Now at 530 all this week, News 4 is taking a look at the biggest issue facing the nation's capital right now, the district and gun violence. And tonight we are highlighting a local hospital, a unique program there that heals the physical and hidden wounds for victims of violence. News 4's Doreen Gensler joins us now with a closer look at what's being done to try to interrupt this cycle of violence in our community. Hi, Doreen. Hi, Jim and Wendy. None of us wants to end up in the emergency room, right? But some say their trip to the ER changed their life for the better, thanks to a program that not only treats a patient's physical injuries, but also provides support and resources in hopes of reducing the number of repeat visitors at the hospital. Tonight, loved ones reeling with grief after gun violence claims the life of a six-year-old girl. An urgent appeal to find the killer. Shootings, stabbings, and violent crimes capture headlines every day, but you don't often hear about what happens afterwards, after hundreds of patients end up here. We see about 600 on average a year of survivors of violent injuries. The trauma unit at MedStar Washington Hospital Center in D.C. is one of the busiest in our area. And for some, it's a blessing in disguise. So we really want to take that therapeutic opportunity to say, we have some resources to help you overcome this, to look forward to the future, to start to set your own goals about what you want and use this period of time and reexamination to set a trajectory towards better health. Dr. Aaron Hall is a surgeon who heads the hospital's community violence intervention program, aimed at breaking the cycle of violence from the moment someone lands in the emergency room. This program offers hands-on support for survivors, helping them find resources for treatment while answering critical questions about what they want to accomplish once they leave the hospital. Are there employment services? Are there education services? Is it uh, linking people more securely to their follow-up physical therapy or other ways to get them more functionally um, on their feet? Unless there's a life-threatening risk, the majority of gunshot victims will go home with a bullet or fragments still lodged in their body. That, too, can create emotional wounds that run deep. It's a marker of the worst day of my life. It's the marker of pain and suffering and probably a whole constellation of um, unfortunate circumstances and terrible, terrible happenings. And it's physically inside you as a reminder of that. The program helps address that trauma, giving survivors a glimpse into what their future can look like following patients for six months after they've been discharged. Once we start gaining trust and start forming that relationship over time, you can hear people start to, to get goals for themselves. I love a picture of somebody getting their GED or somebody getting their commercials driver's license. So we're really making changes in people's lives. Using that time in the hospital to heal and begin to rebuild their lives. Many of the program's treatment navigators and social workers have experiences of violence in their own lives and are survivors themselves, so they're able to relate to what the patients are experiencing. The program is supported by funding from D.C., Maryland, and the National Crime Victim Legal Institute. Wendy and Jim, this is uh, such a good idea to, to uh, when people are vulnerable and when they need uh, help from a gunshot injury, this is a way to connect them with services that can really make a big di difference in their yeah, lives. It's, it's just wonderful. It's really inspiring. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Doreen. Uh -huh.